<laughs> sure. <laughs> you may be a billionaire. Yeah. Entrepreneur, yeah. inventor, man extraordinaire. You're not getting any of my chicken burger. All right, no, no problem. I can I can do without the chicken burger. Mm. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Elon Musk. Yeah. What is it like to be named after the scent of a of a of an animal? It certainly led to um, a, lot, a lot of mocking in in junior high. I know sure. what that feels like. My name right. is Ryan. So, <laughs> right, right. Could you imagine if you were named Rain Musk? <laughs> right, it's raining Musk. I mean, uh, you grew up in South Africa. Yeah. You were, you were in the army there? No, uh, no, I, le I left at seventeen. Well, in, in, in part, in order to avoid conscription into oh, the South African so you army. left so that you didn't have to do the army. You know, spending two years suppressing black people didn't seem to be a great use of time. I think that's probably the worst use of any human being's time. Right. So good for you. Right. <laughs> right on. Elon Musk. <laughs> Draft dodger. Um, I guess the first question um, is, you're the founder of Tesla Motors. Right. Can I have a car? Yes. For free? Uh... What if I told you that I will not let you out of the van unless you give me a car for free? Um, Next question. Now, what was that like when all of a sudden, like you're a millionaire, you're a millionaire, you're working your butt off, you're creating these software companies, sure. you're developing PayPal, and then all of a sudden, like that needle goes blink, and you're a billionaire. Did you ever go like, did you have like a party? Did you blow a party favor? Like, Whoa! when you became uh, no, really. a billion, did your accountant call you and like, guess what, Elon? You no. went from millionaire to billionaire. Not really, no. Uh, no, it, uh, I mean, it's not as though I've got like a billion dollars just sitting in a bank account or something. It just means that that my ownership of the companies, if you add them up, uh, you know, it's, it's a couple billion dollars. Right. It's, it's pretty it's awesome nice. in that you earned it and you made it yourself. Right. And I, I, didn't, you I did not inherit it. Yeah, I did not. And that's so cool right. because people that inherit their billions, I just want to punch them in the throat. <laughs> right. Right. I, I mean, actually, I do. I do think that uh, from from a taxation standpoint, it's better if taxes are focused on, um, it's, it, it's on, on estate taxes when somebody dies, as opposed to taxes when somebody's living. Um, ah, okay. So you're you're in favor of a high estate tax. Uh, I'm in favor of, of, given that there's a certain amount of tax that must be raised, it's. I think it's better to up, uh, obtain that tax upon death than right. during during life. Um, I'll go with that. You know, if if somebody's demonstrated that they are a good steward of capital, then uh, they um, you know they ought to have more capital in order to do more good things with the economy. But if somebody's inherited uh, money, then they have not demonstrated that they are a good steward of capital, and so it's it's less it makes less sense that they inherit money. Also, it I always think that then it's, it urges them to not just stockpile their money, but to give it away. Charitable foundations sure. or, or art or, or gifts, or there's right. all manner of things that you can do. Foundations in your estate planning, if, right. you know, if you've sock, stockpiled all that, all that money. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's really there to give it away. What good is it when you're rotting in the ground? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and also, I think we want to avoid creating an aristocracy of wealth. Um, mm -hmm. you, know, that's, uh, where there's, you, you want to avoid having entrenchment of wealth. Um, mm -hmm. I think that leads to stagnation of, of society. And why is that? Um, well, if, if the rules are set up such that um, you know somebody can't um, make headway, uh, you know, because the, the resources are constrained to a small number of, of people, and and then they ensure that it only goes to their kids, which right. is essentially the, the feudal system, uh, right? Then. Um, you know, it, there's not much point in working hard or or, right. or trying to create great things because you know you, you, there's no reward for that. And there's a lot of countries that are yeah. like that. Some say sure, the United absolutely. States is like that, but in a lot of ways, it's not really. There are a lot of countries yeah. where it's just it's locked up by like in Haiti. There's six families right. that own 99 percent of the wealth, right, right? And the wealth is not trickling down. It's not going anywhere. It's right. just staying in those families, right? And, and the United States, I think, is actually the the, the, the best in the world in terms of enabling opportunity, mm -hmm. uh, but but. We need to be uh, conscious of, of retaining that, uh, that that status. Right on. Where you want to go? Anywhere? Anywhere in the universe? Mars. Mars. Wow, we're there. And you didn't even need a spaceship. <laughs> you just needed a van. Yeah. Why did you want to go to Mars? 
Uh, well, the reason I want to go to Mars is because uh, I think that's the best place where humanity can, can become a multi-planet species and a space-bearing civilization. And I think it's, uh, it's the most exciting place that we could go in the solar system. Now, how would that work for people to go to Mars? Like, what would happen? What would happen? Um, you mean once we were there? Well, like, like how describe to me that process. So a bunch of people, they get on a spaceship. What happened? Talk me through Mars travel. Well, we, you need to have a big spaceship that uh, takes you to Mars. It, it, it'll take um, initially six months to get there, uh, although I think we can bring that down under, to under three months and maybe eventually under a month. Um, and then you have to land on Mars and uh, establish a base there. And um, initially, people would have to live in pressurized domes. Uh, but over time, you could, you could terraform the planet and make it like Earth. So you could... Uh, How would you terraform Mars? You'd actually uh, he heat the planet up by um, uh, emitting greenhouse gases. Kind of the what we're doing on Earth. We're learning a lot about that here on Earth. Um, so we'd, we'd just do that uh, at, on Mars, and that would warm the planet up. Um, it would thicken the atmosphere, and then uh, the atmosphere on Mars is carbon dioxide. So as you grow plants, the, the plants would convert the carbon dioxide into oxygen. How could you plant the first plant on Mars? How would that work? Well, you'd have to initially have plants um, uh, in, in a pressurized dome, transparent dome. Mm -hmm. But all you need is a, a transparent dome and a, and a pump to, to pressurize it from the, the Mars atmosphere. So uh, you can grow you can grow earth plants in Mars soil. You can grow earth plants in Mars soil? That's correct. But it's cold over there on Mars, isn't it? Right, so you have to warm it up. You need a lot of down comforters over there. Yeah, you need to, if, but if you have a, a, a greenhouse, sort of a... Space heaters. Well, the greenhouse is a greenhouse effect, right? So it's just right. like it's just like greenhouse. It would Earth. warm it up. Yeah, warm it up. That's fantastic. And then, what do the humans do when they're there? Uh, well, I think like initially volleyball or what? Initially, uh, people would would work on creating a Mars base, um, and and creating the infrastructure necessary to support uh, life on on Mars. So that would that would take a lot of effort. Just just as it took a lot of effort uh, to establish the American colonies. Now, does the ship come back? Do yeah. You, when you go to Mars, are you going to go like, I'm going to die on Mars? So you take healthy people that are just going to plan on living the rest of their 30 or 40 years on Mars or something like that? Well, well most, most people would actually, I think most people would go to Mars to move to Mars, but the spaceships would come back because otherwise it would be way too expensive to travel to Mars. So uh, people could choose to come back to Earth if they want or come back to Earth for, for a visit or something like that. Could you imagine the first baby born on Mars? Right. That would be huge. That would be freaky. Yeah. Right. A lot of pressure for that poor kid. Right. The, fir the, fir the first Martian. The first Martian. That's right. Would you go to Mars? Yeah, yeah, I would like to go to Mars. Uh, but but um, the reason for SpaceX is to enable uh, anyone who goes to Mars, or anyone who wants to, to go to Mars. So we want to enable people to go to Mars. You know, governments or the world government would, you know, or United Nations or something like that would, would pay to get the people over there. Because SpaceX yeah. is a for-profit company, obviously. So uh, SpaceX is with, with the goal of, of advancing rocket technology so that eventually we could travel to Mars um, and, 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 and establish a base on Mars um, and, and make life multi-planetary. Because I think that's one of the most important things that, that we could accomplish. Um, in fact, I think it's important enough that it would actually fit on the scale of evolution itself. Um, if you consider the, the, the major elements on the scale of evolution um, as being the advent of single-celled life, multicellular life, uh, uh, differentiation of plants and animals, life going from the oceans to land, um, mammals and consciousness, those are probably the big ones. But I think on that, uh, on that scale, it would also fit life becoming multi-planetary for the first time. Um, you know, I think it's perhaps at least as important as life going from the oceans to land. Um, and it would, uh, I think, preserve the light of consciousness, uh, you know, the, the consciousness, the probability of consciousness existing for a long time uh, would, would be much greater if, if we were on two planets. If something catastrophic were to happen to Earth, then right. it would, you know, life would still exist on another planet. Right. I mean, let's say there was a, a, a giant uh, meteor impact or, oh, or okay. a, a super volcano or, you know, we, we had sort of a massive nuclear war on Earth, or right. some super virus. Right. Um, you know, I mean, there, there could be something that that doesn't necessarily initially uh, destroy um, human civilization, but but knocks it back to a much lower technology technology level. Uh, right. And 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 that and then there's sort of a decline to to eventual extinction. So I I totally uh, believe in science. I mean, science isn't something you believe in. It's something that just yeah. is. But it just you had referenced kind of the uh, reverse climate change. But what drives me crazy is the, uh, the climate change deniers. And what, what is up with that? Is it just become so politicized that right. they just have stopped believing scientists? That's what drives me crazy is that people don't believe scientific reports 
they believe conservative AM radio disc jockeys and certain, you know, Fox yeah. News reporters instead of scientists. Right. I mean, it's, 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 I think it's, it's problematic. And I think often that this debate is, is phrased in the wrong way. Um, because uh, they'll often say, uh, well, how do we know for certain that CO2 uh, emissions cause global warming? Um, and if you ask a sci scientist, do you know anything for certain? They will generally say, well, no, we don't know for certain. Or we don't know, we know hardly anything for certain. Um, right. But, but that's, that's not the right question. The question is really, um, uh, do we know that it won't cause global warming? Um, and, and we absolutely do not know uh, it, w it won't cause global warming. In fact, it's quite the, the overwhelming opinion uh, among the scientific community is that CO2 is causing global warming. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, given that we will run out of oil anyway and must find a sustainable means of generating energy and, and consuming energy, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it makes no sense to run this experiment. Um, you know, uh, it, it's we're going to run out of oil and coal. These, these are finite resources. Sure. So um, why not look for those alternate resources and, right. and, uh, and, 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 and also potentially heal the planet's atmosphere at right. a much faster rate? Yeah, it, it just doesn't make, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to, to consume, to, to, to put trillions of tons of CO2 in the atmosphere and see what happens, which could be catastrophic, um, when we have to find a non- uh, um, hydrocarbon-based way of generating and consuming energy anyway. Now so it's, have, it's just a dumb experiment. Now you had said that there are three main problems that you are focused on the most. What are those three? Uh, right. So, um, well, there were three, uh, when I was in college, was, I, there was, I thought there were three things that would most affect the future of humanity. And those were the internet, uh, sustainable energy, and uh, space exploration. Uh, so those three things would they're not problems per se, but they're the three things that will affect humanity the most. Right. I, I, exactly. Uh, the things that, that would, and, 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 and in a good internet, way, if, energy, if they're solved right. Yeah. Internet, energy, and space exploration. Yeah, and specifically um, extending life beyond Earth. Now, why did you choose those three things and not healthcare, education, and the environment? So sustainable energy is about the environment. Um, it's, it's the biggest environmental issue that we face. Oh, um, good point. So, with respect to healthcare, the real problem is not is not curing any any one particular disease. Um, it's actually that we have a, a natural kind of uh, age limit, if you will, um, which is around eighty. Um, mm -hmm. That that's that's the, the, the a human being is essentially genetically programmed to die around age eighty, mm -hmm. um, and the, the cause of death will will, will vary. Um, but it's it's just because you're, you're having multiple organ failure, your immune system isn't working well anymore, mm -hmm. and you're suffering from dementia. You're just going to die around around 80 on average, um, maybe 80. You know, maybe that'll creep up to the sort of 85 sure. year level. But that's that's really it. In fact, mm -hmm. if we cured all cancer, um, the average lifespan would only increase by like two years. So you do just die of heart disease or right. get organ failure. Any number of things. Yeah, exactly. You so. just start falling apart. You right. get in your 70s and things just start falling apart. Right. I mean, all, all, all creatures have a natural lifespan that is built into their DNA. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, for instance, fruit flies live, live I think, a few weeks. Right. Um, and it really doesn't matter. Can you reprogram the DNA? Well, that's, Can you that's, get in that's there the and do that and reprogram human beings to live well, to 150? We'll, we'll see that, that, that that's essentially uh, what, what would have to happen is, is uh, in order to live longer and particularly live longer in, in, a, in a sort of good way a and healthy a, way healthy yeah. healthy way mm -hmm. not, not, you know not just um, decrepit living in an old place <laughs> like right. i mean you could be on like yeah. life support you know where you can't move and you, you've got one functioning neuron that's that's not fun right um uh but uh but but so you'd have to reprogram the dna in order to um to live live longer in a healthy way mm -hmm. um and so that's that's probably the, that, that 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 that's an area where I think there's likely to be breakthroughs, um, but it's going to take a while um, because of the sensitivity of experimenting with DNA. Right. Um, and um, so, so I do think that that's also an area that that'll have a, that'll have a big effect, but it'll have more of an effect on individual lives than on humanity collectively. Gotcha. Now you have been called uh, real life Tony Stark. You're inventing lots of cool new stuff. What does that feel like? Well, I guess elements of it are true. Um, although, I mean, Tony Stark doesn't have five kids, so I get, you know, most, I spend more time <laughs> at uh, like Disney World than, or Disneyland, really, because I'm in California, uh, right. that, than I do, you know, having parties and stuff. You know. right. Well, I like having parties. Seriously. I, I, I could probably make a flying suit, but, uh, 
you know, I, I think you uh, could make a flying suit sure. and you're making solar power. Sure. What are you thinking? <laughs> Think. Well, I mean, th th there's, there's, there's no strange. I mean, wh what would I do with a flying suit? I mean, there's... I could tell you a thousand <laughs> things to do with a flying suit. You fly around in it. It would look awesome. It would look awesome. But... You could blow up things. I, I, I'd, I'd probably be locked up. Uh, hey, you know? listen. I thought that we were going to be flying around in jetpacks. Now, right? Can you be the guy? Can you make the jetpacks, please? I mean, people actually have made jet jetpacks and rocket packs. I've seen um, them on YouTube, but they crash all the time. <laughs> that's the problem. See, um, it's like you, you can't have random people flying around with jetpacks because they'll could crash. You, they'll crash on you. But could you imagine <laughs> the air in Los Angeles if there were jetpacks? Right. No, it would just I mean, be like it would be swarms of gnats bumping into each other and people right. going. Right. I mean, people it's, cutting each other off. It would be awful. If, if somebody crashes, you know, the, you know, you have to be constantly looking up in case somebody's with a jetpack right. lands, lands on you. you know, that's true. Be, yeah. Okay. We don't kind of need a dodgy jetpacks. situation. Yeah. So, um, what do you think about the singularity? Well, so the, the singularity is uh, is what um, What's the singularity. That that's that's the uh, point where uh, artificial intelligence exceeds human intelligence, um, and the reason it's called singularity, and I think Ray Kurzweil coined that term, um, is because after that we don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, we'll what will happen? You know, if you've got some sort of super smart computer that's increasing in intelligence in kind of a runaway fashion. Do you have a spiritual life? Uh, well, it sort of depends on what spiritual means. Um, but what do you think spiritual means? I mean, it is one of those words that kind of needs to be defined for everyone. Some people it's like their religion and it's a very specific kind of thing. For some people it's a very vague kind of yoga and crystals and some meditation classes and stuff like that. and. Uh, for me, it is the life of the human being that's beyond the physical and the material. Uh, that also is a little bit more than just thought, because we have thoughts. Right. Uh, but those are physical, because there's neurons that are bouncing around. Right. I, so, mean, I, mean, I mean, maybe there's some, some dimension where thoughts exist or something. Because, you know, what is a thought? And what is it? I mean, is it, I mean, I'm not sure what, what thoughts are, um, you know, whether there's some... some manifestation of thought in, in a way that, uh, you know, is different from the, the physical dimensions we're aware, we're aware of. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's certainly uh, things that we, we don't understand about the universe. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm less convinced that there's, say, um, some, some super consciousness watching over our every movement and kind of evaluating it against some criteria, you know, and deciding whether we're going to go to one place or another when we die. Mm -hmm. I think that's unlikely. Right. I, I think that's very unlikely right. too. That's, I I personally do believe in God, but I don't define God in that way. I would define God as closer to being like science, right? Or the energy, the laws that propel science, because science really quantifies. So, what is it quantifying? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and and it does beg the question: if there is some super consciousness, or consciousness, where did the super consciousness come from? Um, and uh, so I think the most likely explanation is uh, that uh, complexity evolved from simplicity. You know, that the simple elements over time combined to become more complex and mm. arrived at what we are. Mm -hmm. um, it's also possible, though, that we're in a simulation. That we're in a simulation like the Matrix? Yeah. Well, different from the Matrix, uh, but, but a simulation of sorts, yeah. Well, this whole world could be a dream. It could be a dream, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it could be a simulation. I mean, have, have, you, ever, have you ever played like these, like the most, the, the advanced video games and how, how realistic they're getting? I know. There, it's, uh, it is like a whole nother, it is like a whole nother life. Right. Yeah. With the goggles and everything, 3D and everything. Yeah. All of that stuff. It could be that, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's what we know to be with. Maybe we're, we're some, some other creature's avatar. You're blowing my mind. <laughs> You deal with so much stuff. I mean, you deal with space travel and energy and the source of consciousness, and you're thinking about all of these giant life's big questions. What blows your mind? What gives you awe? Well, I think that, I mean, the, the nature of the universe uh, gives me awe, and, the, and just the, the huge expanse of, of, of the universe, and um, you know, just how far away things are and how big they are. 
the fact that there are things like supermassive black holes that are equal to a billion suns. You know. What about dark matter? Doesn't that freak you out too? Uh, yeah, and dark, dark matter um, is also, I mean, uh, dark matter and dark energy are, are, are kind of interesting because, I, mean, I mean, I'm not sure what those actually are. You know, obviously people don't know what, what no. those actually right. are, and particularly dark energy. In fact, this is why, you know, th that may be an argument for this being a simulation. Um, because in a simulation, you wouldn't, you know, you could just make things be however you want. The, the laws don't all have to be consistent. Um, but that could be a great argument for heaven and earth, and it's another way of looking at it, is that this physical plane is like a video game. And we're down here thinking it's very real, just like our avatars sure. and do in, in, you know, in Call of Duty or whatever yeah. game we're, we're playing. And then we get unplugged in our 80s, and... Um, then we're on to some other plane or some other reality right. where we go, oh, that was just a video game right. that whole time, and I thought it was real. Yeah. What would you say to young people that want to change the world, that have big ideas? What advice could you give? Uh, I would say, go, you know, go do it. Um, you know, just, just go out there and, and, and do it. Um, the, I mean, the biggest thing I think people uh, fail to do is that they, they, they're, they're too afraid to try things. You know, mm -hmm. that they shouldn't be afraid of, of, of failing and, and they should just go go and do it. Did you fail at anything that you tried? I, I've, I've lost, I mean, I've not lost a war, but I've lost battles, certainly. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first three um, flights of, of the Falcon 1 rocket, uh, they crashed. So. Wow, that must have been a big bummer. Yeah, it was a big bummer. Did you cry? No. No? I'll make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> With the new lightning round from Soul Pancake. Do you own right. my book? No, I don't. You suck. Okay, what do you worship? Well, I, I don't really worship anything, but I, I do devote myself to the advancement of humanity uh, using technology. What can technology never replace? I think human feeling. Are you a workaholic? I suppose I am. Uh, I work a lot. What fuels your creativity? Pressure. Necessity. What do you do to unplug and relax? Well, I uh, like, going, like going to the movies, I like going to, to, to parties, um, having dinner with friends. Um, I go to Burning Man, that's pretty fun. Did you go to Burning Man? Sure. What do you do there? <laughs> it just, it's, it's just like a crazy sort of Mad Max meets Vegas meets Alice in Wonderland. Do you put on a hippie wig? No, I usually have some kind of costume. I went to Darth Vader once. Do you believe there's life on other planets? I think there's a good chance that there's simple life on other planets. Um, it's much more of a question as to whether there's complex life like consciousness. With all the trillions of stars and all those trillions of planets, you don't think that, isn't that an arrogant statement to say we're probably the most evolved in all of the universe? Um, well, no, I'm not saying that we probably are. Just I think that the chances of, of, of consciousness are much, much lower, particularly in our galaxy. Um, you know, because we have to ask the question, if there's consciousness, where is it? Can science and religion coexist? Probably not. Do you pray? <laughs> I don't. I didn't even pray when I, when I almost died of malaria. Wow, that's really not praying. Right. So you put your money where your bug spray was. Yeah. Um, what's your life's big question? What's the big question you personally wrestle with? Well, I mean, I, I guess I, 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 I wrestled with the, the, the question of, of what is the question? Um, you know, like from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the answer is the universe. What's the question? One of the world's greatest entrepreneurs is here in the back of my van. What's your big ideas? What do, how do you want to be an entrepreneur? What kind of passion or dream do you want to pursue to make the world a better place, to take humanity to the next level? Can you upload it on a video or write it down in the comments below? I'll tell you what, I'll give you a bite. <laughs> okay. You give me a Tesla. Sounds like a good deal. Deal? Deal. <laughs>